You asked for it, you got it. Welcome to my brand new course, Rockabilly Rhythm Guitar, where I'll show you what to play in between the solos. You'll learn some cool sounding bass runs and the methods to derive many more licks from one single pattern. I will teach you some easy to use chord shapes and after studying this course, you will be able to come up with creative rhythms just on your own. the unique style of Eddie Bush. Furthermore, some hot licks by Hal Harris, Grady Martin, Chuck Berry and many more. Twenty lectures, two hours of video, downloadable tabs, jam tracks and chord diagrams. Learning has never been so easy. Why wait to become a better guitar player when you can enroll right now in my brand new course Rockabilly Rhythm Guitar. Hello everybody and welcome back to another Rockabilly Guitar lesson. No solo today, but instead I'll show you some Rockabilly bass runs that you can play on your guitar. And this is part of my brand new Udemy course Rockabilly Rhythm Guitar which just came out last weekend. Uh, this lesson is brought to you as so many others by my supporters on Patreon. Yeah, their support allows me to sit down every week and create new material and this is of course fantastic. Uh, I can't thank you enough guys. The link to my Patreon channel and also to all my Udemy courses are in the description below. And now without any further talking let's get right to it. Here are some rockabilly bass runs. The next pattern, the next run that I want to show you has a Latin feel to it and you can hear it in countless rock and roll and rockabilly songs. It sounds like this. So you start with an open A string, followed by the fourth fret and the second on the D string. And this is just a A major triad. Yeah, A, C sharp, and E are the notes that make up the A chord, the A major chord. And you can play around with a length of the notes, maybe keep the first one short, or the last one, like this, and play with the dynamics and where you position your pick. Like this, or the other way around, or just play it regular wherever you play it yeah um, it, so this gives you different options and sounds as well and now i want to show you the first variation to this pattern to this lick so again you put your index on the d and the g string second fret yeah, as part of the a chord and then you will play string pairs double stops So you start with the A and D string, yeah. open and second fret. Then you put your ring finger onto the fourth, like you did before, and then you play the D and the G string. And again, if you want to go to the D chord here, you have to use the D chord. Yeah, put the middle finger here on the. 3rd fret B string. For the next variation I will use the hammer on again that we had in the first basic run, first basic pattern from the 3rd to the 4th fret on the A string. And I will play double stops again but keep the first note short. So it sounds like this and this will be the beginning of 20 flat rock. Huh? And you can use, uh, could use a um, slide as well. Whatever feels best for you. So now we play the same basic run but in a different position. So then we can switch uh, to another key as well. Yeah? So the fifth fret. E string, 
fourth on the A string and seventh on the A string. Give you the same notes as we had played before. But now if you just want to change to uh, like A flat, you can just go to the fourth fret and play the pattern here. So it's easier to transpose to other keys. And you have a little bit more control because you don't have an open string. Yeah. And we can slide into the second note. Like this. Yeah. So to make it more interesting. And um, in this position here, when you go to D, you just play the same, but a string higher. And when you have to move to E, you go just two frets up. To play this. Then the next variation, it sounds like this. And you can hear this lick in Should We Tell Him by uh, the Everly Brothers. And I think uh, Hank Garland played guitar on that one. So you play the first note, the fifth fret, E string, and you hammer on from four to five on the A string and go back to the fourth fret. So it sounds like this. The next variation. Again, starting here on A. And this time you slide on the D string from the 3rd to the 4th fret. And then you play the 7th on the A string. So it sounds like this. And this would be uh, the F sharp, the 6th note of the scale. Huh? Next variation. So I start again on A, 5th fret, and then I slide this time into the 7th fret, A string, and then I play the 4th on the D string. And I use my ring finger here to slide into the 7th. It's a little stretch to the 4th then, but it's okay. Sounds like this. And here's the last variation that I want to show you. Uh, it's very similar to the one before, but this time you slide on the D string into the 7th fret. And this would be the octave. Yeah? So you play A, A, and then the 4th fret. To further improve your sound, you can also slide out of the notes. Yeah? For instance, the first one, like this. Oh, you can slide out of the last note. It sounds more interesting than just playing. But, uh, yeah, it takes a little bit more technique, especially for the if you use the last one here, the, the pinky. To be back in time here on the on the first note, yeah, the other fifth fret, E string.